If you're like me and have been in quarantine for the past month because of coronavirus, you might have spent some time on the internet. I know, crazy idea. You might have stumbled across this clip being posted a bunch. What animal are you? Somewhere between a wolf and a kitten. So it's like, it's like a made up thing called a witten. I like to purr a lot, but only during sex. And then I just go and like, yiff, yiff, good boy. I live in immigrant housing with a bunch of other undocumented people because I don't have an ID or a social security card or any credit because I'm trying to live off the grid because that's how committed I am to not being human. How old's your baby? She's five months old. Shout out to my parents for adopting her and my, my gay boyfriend for staying in Ohio because he's gay. Do you have the craziest furry story? Yeah, for okay, for a couple of days, um, one of my really best friends was like, hey, you like being an animal so much, why don't you eat off of the floor and the ground? And then it turned into two days of me like not speaking, and I just ate like literal cat food and like drank out of a bowl. How'd that make you feel? Good. Why? Because I got head pats. This clip specifically was from an all gas, no breaks video. And if you're like me, you probably had these questions. Erm, um, WTF the fuck is going on? Is she on drugs? Is this for real? What does Yoshi's egg smell like after he poops him out? Is it normal to want to smell Yoshi's eggs after he poops him out? But more importantly, who is this girl? After scouring the comment section, I found nothing except her Instagram. And I managed to message her to do an interview to which she actually responded and was very gracious to provide me with an interview. Just to preface this interview, I did my best to be non-judgmental and not treat her like some, uh, uh, sort of freak show or liberal cringe compilation number 12 slapping my knee lamowing my ass off on the floor you know i was really interested about the story behind this clip and just like what the fuck what the hell everything in the video was everything you said in that true um or was it like exaggeration or shit or just like a bit well the thing is it started out as a bit like for sure. And then, yeah, like, because I had, like, DM'd him, and he was telling me that the furries at a spur fest were, like, not giving him the energy that he wanted. Um, so he was like, I know you're crazy, and you can wear, like, anime outfits or whatever, and you have a tail and a bunch of ears. And so I did, and, um, yeah, it was just like pretty much an exaggerated version of myself and everything was true except for when I said like shout out to my baby daddy for being gay, I just meant like gay as in like like like, like I don't even want to say it like but he's not gay. Um so we'll just start there. Okay, <laughs> I was going to ask about that like sexuality matters. Mm -hmm. um, but he's not totally gay. Um, and then my parents are taking care of her for me, my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and I said that in kind of like a mean way. So prior to the to this specific video, did you know Andrew All Gas No Breaks, or did he meet you at the con and then he was like, "I need more footage." All right. I had to grab the jewels. Um, actually, uh, I had just known him, like, through Instagram, kind of. After that, like, we became really good friends. Like, he actually has a girlfriend and more friends. We actually met up in L.A. when I went to L.A. for that one shitty interview. And that's not the reason why I'm, but, like, whatever, whatever. We recorded another video, and it's really long, and I... Like, I'm in a cage on Hollywood Boulevard and a bunch of stuff, and I don't know when that's ever going to come out. So yes, I know Andrew personally now, and him and his girlfriend have helped me a lot. Well, that's good to hear. Um, he's a really, he's a really good guy. Okay, so I just, there were so many things that you said in the video that now that I know it was a little bit played up, like, I'm curious which ones were like... You said that you was the fucking thing about Bobby Shmurda and then you doing gang signs. Was that like exaggeration and joke shit, or were you like legitimately into like gang shit? No, I legitimately am gang as fuck. Like I lived on when I was living in Chicago at the time. I was living like South Side by the Sox Stadium, like Sox and Thirty Fifth, and I actually recently 
fell in with a couple of um, gangs, just as friends. It ended up with one of them stealing my car and getting arrested in it with a gun. But um, yeah, so like I was legit into all that. Sh I would like roll around with them. And like when when you are doing stuff like that, you kind of feel like like nothing can hurt you. So. So you you said a th you were talking about how you didn't have your social security card and you didn't have any credit because you said you were like super committed to not being human. Okay, was that that's, true? That's a hundred and ten thousand percent true. My God, that's crazy. Um. So nobody knows my real name or my birth name, and um, I don't want to get into it too much, but like mm -hmm. my. Parents were both in the military, um, so we had the privilege of being raised by two people that hate the government and have some connections as to like if you want or you can disappear kind of thing. I have no credit, never opened a credit card legally, and um, yeah, I've never. I've always paid rent with cash. I've never signed a lease. I've never like buy a car or like whatever um i've always just kind of been like a drifter like going here to there because society obviously like we're witnessing it right now like mm -hmm. yeah okay <laughs> so wow okay so, <laughs> i'm sorry if i'm trying if i'm coming off as like a dick like laughing at you i'm not trying to it's just this is very <laughs> wild I think everything's funny, so it's cool. All right. So I how did Ursula today? All your social media handles and shit. You always go by Witten. How did you come to like the name Witten? It's obviously a wolf kitten hybrid, but like, how did you get, um, come to that? Well, I grew up in like very rural Ohio, and uh, there's a lot of like coyotes and wolves, and I love them. Like my brother was always really scared of them, and like whenever they were out out i would sleep on the trampoline just so i could like hear them and like be closer to them not in like a furry way completely because mm -hmm. they don't like you know i don't have like a fursuit or anything i just really like embodying like one like day pet play type like stuff a... or well with the wolf part it's more of like do or die for my friends, like everybody in the pack, like I got you kind of thing. Like I love that mentality. And with the kitten thing, it's more of like, yeah, like I just, I'm like a little girl. I like, like to be like fed and being nice too. And I like to lay on the end of my bed like a cat. And I had this big, well, she's still alive at my parents in Ohio. Um, She's like 14 years old. She's a big fatty and I love cats and wolves. Mm -hmm. That actually just kind of like, it's always been in my head, but when he asked me what my like persona was, it was just like right there. I'm pretty sure everyone has like in the comment sections of that shit was always talking about how many drugs were you on? Were you on any forms of drugs during that entire like video or not? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I was like during the time i was drinking so much fire like at one point my instagram page got sponsored by fireball and Jesus. it was me bottles and bottles and bottles of it so i was drinking it basically everywhere I, I went so i already had like a little bit of like a buzz on um and then literally all we did was like we split an adderall like between us and that was it okay wow yeah very like <laughs> We didn't even like, it was just, we took an Adderall. Oh, okay. I was like that hype, like normally, like, and especially since I knew we were filming, it was, I like it was absolutely insane. Uh, so yeah, that was all the drugs we were on, like, honest to God. <laughs> the Midwest Fur Fest was in Ohio at the time, correct? And then, okay. In Chicago, where I was living. And um, I like, I had just got done working at Double, and I like did not want to go, but I've been messaging Andrew for like so long, and he was finally just like, fuck it, let's go. 
and I was like, mm, and I put on like fur boots and my and my outfit and my tail and my ears. I did my makeup in the car and like in the Uber, um, and that was that. Which <laughs> things like before that, like all gas no brakes was like, like kind of doing well on Instagram, but then like we were on the front page, like of Reddit, we were on the front page of. Reddit. Yeah, I remember that. Andrew and all gas no brakes credit, um, because he works really hard. He edited, he edits it all himself. Um, so yeah, but like it just went from shoom, and I remember being on the front page of Reddit, and I quit my job, and I like just went around to each like restaurant booth where I worked, and I was like, I'm on the front page of Reddit, bitch. I just like went out and like quit. And I told a bunch of people on Twitter that were following me um, to like come in and like yell at my managers and stuff to get me fired. <laughs> and then the, the, a couple days after that, I went to LA. Uh, could you please explain just like why you moved around so much? Was it just because of like the whole blow up type thing? You were like, I gotta get to LA, or was there like. No, I've always, like, ever since I was 16. Like I know it doesn't it doesn't start great, but when I was 16, I was like just doing anything to get out of. Cause I grew up in like a double wide, like a trailer park kind of sitch, like trailer park. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just like always trying to get out. And my room, I, when I was like a little girl, had like no windows even. So I was always trying to like get out, escape, whatever. So when I was 15, I used the excuse of like my high school boyfriend. So like, um, we got like fake engaged or whatever, and I moved to Kentucky. That was my first move. Moved back. Um, then I went to Columbus for a little bit. Then I went to the UK for a while. And then Tennessee. And then back to Ohio and then Chicago. And then I went to LA for a little bit and then I'm where I am now. And I don't know if this would be too personal, but where are you? Like, what city? Um, Blackpool. That's in Europe? You're in Europe right now? Yeah. Damn. Wow. <laughs> it's really actually pretty easy to get fake IDs and fake passports. If anybody wants information on that, I could definitely um, <laughs> this talk is about with that. I'm like the fucking nerdiest white kid ever. This is really... <laughs> God, wow. Um... So obviously I see on your Instagram story and shit, all this posts a lot of shit about anime and like you have a lot of anime girl aesthetic type shit. So just what are your favorite anime? Uh, my favorite anime of all time would have to be Hunter x Hunter. Mm -hmm. There's Kiwa. And, um, I know it's new, but Darling in the Franks is like, like everything to me. I actually made a, like a dumb song about Darling in the Franks on SoundCloud with my friend. Uh, it's, you know, the classics like Neon, yeah. um, Jojo. Mm -hmm. um, I really like uh, Lind S. Mm, and like Kobayashi strikes me. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, good taste, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. It's a big spectrum. Okay. And in terms, like, I don't. This is probably a little broad, but in terms of like, pers like inspiration for your personality and style, do you have any like big inspirations? That's a hard one. Um. Well, I've always been me. Undoubtedly. Even when <laughs> yes. I was younger, my parents like shaved my head into a mullet. And um, I remember the first time that I like tried fake hair, my mom put like a fake bun on my head for a school picture. And ever since then, I've just been like obsessed with like hair extensions and wigs and just being able to like change your personality with like a different um, whatever. And my parents have always been like really open to like how I wanted to dress and how I wanted to like express myself as a 
individual and I guess kind of like inspirations. I don't know. I don't really be looking at anybody like that. So like, it's just more like free spirit. You do your own thing. You're just not like. Yeah. Like here, I'll let you know. Um, like I have cheesy stuff like this, like this, mm -hmm. um, garden stuff. Like Vic Victoria's Secret pink, um, okay. some, like a little bit of Ed Hardy, mm -hmm. and then there's also like the Joy Division stuff, and the I don't know. It's just like I consider myself like a collage of like everything that I. So you already talked a little bit about music taste, but you already talked about Joy Division. Any, I, I've seen on like your story and shit, you'd always dance to Jack Staub or any other bands you really like and vibe to? Um, I really only know that one song by that guy that I always dance to. Yeah. Um, oh, I was like a huge gorilla stand when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So you have like physical like vinyl records? I do somewhere. Every time I leave, I like um, leave like a lot of my stuff there. Mm -hmm. Have like this rule where like every time I get like an article of clothing, I like have to get rid of one. Um, but you know, I like a lot of soundtracks. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I really, I really like Little Peep, um, and I like I stay I I know. Like uh, some of the, I just really like '80s music, like New Order, and oh, um, freaking, like uh, the Flaming Lips, but only Stop Ten album. I don't know the music thing. It's like it's too much. It just depends on whatever. Yeah. If I can be honest with you, I haven't really been able to listen to music since I I like went through this really traumatic like breakup thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so ever since then, like, I haven't been able to listen to music, really, as much as I... Is his name Jack Mouse or something? Is that a guy? I think you mean John Mouse? John Mouse, yeah, he's cool. Um... Life can be so full of danger. So, you recently posted on your Instagram story, you were talking about how you got out of rehab. Could you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about, like, you know... I would love talk about this yeah go ahead um, that's, it's important um for people to know that there like is a way out mm -hmm. uh, this is gonna be i'll keep it short but so i when i went back to chicago i was only there for like a little bit but like i fell into this really weird like rave type scene and um the big thing to like fit in was to like really do drugs and like I've done drugs before like I'm from Ohio like I started taking just pills when I was 13 um but it got really bad especially with the drinking um and it just got to the point where I realized that like I just wasn't functioning very well without them and I knew that I was like addicted Mm -hmm. I remember, like, I got carbon monoxide poisoning, broke my leg, got roofied all in one week. And then Jesus. I woke up in this house and it was just like the walls were dirty and like the blanket smelt bad. And like, I didn't even like the guy that I was hanging out with. Um, Sam, if you watch this, I'm not talking about you. Um, and it was just like, that was like rock bottom. That was like, and mm -hmm. then, and, and, rehab or recovery like you have to reach a rock bottom so it's really important to like get there and i've actually had a couple messages from my friends saying that like oh you've helped me like want to quit cocaine or kratom or whatever um so that's cool but yeah i was in i had to go to detox and then i had to go to rehab but i had like a seizure there because they messed up my medication so I was able to come to like this like safe haven, just a clean environment basically, which is better than rehab because rehab was like jail and you had to wear scrubs and you had to like follow a schedule. You didn't get a phone. Um, you didn't get makeup. You, it was terrible. 
but I'm 36 days sober now. That's good. And yeah, it's really good. I can't say that I think I'm an alcoholic. I think I was like subject to circumstance. Like I really wanted to fit in and I didn't even realize that like a lot of people were just like watching my downfall and cheering it on um, for entertainment. And like people would invite me to like rave parties just as like a novelty. Like not even like they wanted to hang out with me. They like just wanted to like get a picture, like you know, like just watch me like be an idiot. Very degrading. And mm -hmm. I'm starting to make peace with a lot of it, but um, it still kind of burns. Because I lost out of like everything that was important. And I lost like a lot of my real friends. In the video you talked about your, your kid being adopted by your parents, was that related to like the drug abuse problem at the time or? No. Um, I'm young, I'm not 26 like that video says, I think you just thought that was funny. Um, but, uh, a lot of, like, young people just aren't ready to be parents. Mm hmm And, um, I know I'm not supposed to talk about it on media, but I love my family, um, her dad was my best friend and we lived together for three I love her and my parents and we're all gonna have like this big sort of modern family deal like that show where she's like, a different kind of family you know because mm -hmm. like it's like different times so yeah like I'm always gonna be her mom mm -hmm. and I'm really happy but like a lot of people aren't ready and just like financially and I just wasn't ready, and that's totally okay if that's like the situation and you find yourself. You said you were 36 days sober. Do you think you've been doing better recently in the? You know what's weird? It's like it's like what I was like talking about earlier about not being able to listen to music. I like I cry a lot now. Mhm. Mm um, and I don't know if it's a bad or a good thing, but I know that I'm feeling a lot healthier. Um. I do have to go to this, like my heart's doing weird things and my brain's doing weird things since the seizure. But mm -hmm. I, I have a lot less, I have like no bruises. I'm like, I have like a whole like skincare routine. And like, my I'm like cleaning, like my space is like clean and then- <laughs> It's cleaner than mine, it. sadly, so. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's just, it's like little things I think that have improved. Um, but it's really like all of these drug counselors, social workers, whatever, they don't care about you personally. Therapists are just like, they just want a paycheck is what I found, mm -hmm. which sucks. Um, but I don't know what you're looking for in them and I don't suggest it. And I also don't advocate for SSRI or anything that hormonally or messes with your brain um because that's also good to figure out yourself like whether it's hard or easy it's all because at the end of the day like you're the most important part of anything i know it's cliche but like how can i love you if i can't love myself kind of like thing i'm figuring it out but i do physically kind of feel better well, that's 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 great to hear. I forgot to ask this. In terms of like self-identification, it probably doesn't really matter that much. In terms of like, oh, I'm like lesbian or whatever the fuck. Like, I should probably should have asked like which pronouns and shit you prefer, as well as like how you self-identify. Um, I I've struggled with my gender for as long as I can imagine. Like, mm -hmm. um. I'm not gonna give away my real gender because I really have to start to like kind of get to where I am today. But mm -hmm. I identify as she and her, or they them. Either way, um, that's fine. This is my final question. In terms of if there's anything you wanted like anyone to know about Witten, what is like the most important thing? Well, online, like even some of my friends, like YouTubers, or like IG fans whatever they like act weird they like put on this like weird persona of like 
always having to be like this one certain like pose or like this one certain like character um but like with me like it's just like raw mm -hmm. and um i just want everybody to feel like they can do the same thing mm -hmm. um like because at the end of the day your parents people you go to school with your friends they like they don't matter the whole thing to me is a simulation and um just like have fun like my whole thing is to have fun like no matter like no matter what it takes just like be happy or be sad i don't I care just like be genuine we've lost this whole genuine thing you even like someone will like write a funny tweet and then never fails that like in the bottom it's like make sure you follow me and do this like just have fun and like put everybody's so like weighed down by all of these like social expectations and like education and your degree it doesn't matter your debt doesn't like take out a credit card and just like swipe that bitch up, you know, don't pay it back. Don't pay your medical bills. Don't, like, I, I, it doesn't matter. None of it matters. Just live hard and as full as you can. And I promise that like you won't regret anything because I have like literally zero regrets ever. My DMs are always open. And um, I know I've posted my phone number like many times. Um, but you can always see me on like Twitter or Instagram or whatever if you need to talk or you like have questions about whatever. I'm going to make a video soon about like how I live off the grid and like all that stuff and how I'm able to travel because I don't have like a job or whatever and believe it or not like I don't do sex work so I'm going to make a video about that later. Um, so. I just want to take these last moments to thank Whitten for actually responding to an interview. I was so unprepared for this, literally. I had an hour of preparation to do this, and the moment I ended the recording, I started capping like a witch because I was so freaked out over actually doing this. <laughs> Not to get all fucking stupid and sappy and emotional, but. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Fuck you. Uh, eat a shoe. Bye.